Okay, this is a short video looking at what happens when we integrate various functions uh, with complex numbers involved. This time we're going to have a look at what happens when we integrate cos ix, or the hyperbolic cos function. This was studied by uh, Johann Lambert. He was one of the first to, to look at hyperbolic functions. Okay, so this time uh, we might have a kind of expected, uh, expected result. If we expect that uh, these functions behave like normal functions, in this case here, cos ix, we might expect it to integrate to 1 over i sine ix, because cos integrates to sine. And if you think about normal differentiation, if I differentiate 1 over something sine, say for example ax, then that would differentiate back to give this. So I might kind of expect that this result holds. Um, so let's see if it does or not. Um, an equivalent way of saying that one, if I'm dividing by i, I can times the top and the bottom by i. If I times the top by i, obviously I've got i. i times i on the bottom is minus 1. So this result here is the same as integral of cos ix is equal to minus i sine ix plus c. So the question is, is that true? Does that result hold? Uh, obviously it holds for, for real numbers. Does it hold when we've got uh, imaginary numbers as well? Okay, so for this one we're going to use uh, a couple of identities. We're going to use the identity for cos theta. Uh, cos theta we can actually write as e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta over 2. So therefore if we've got cos ix, we just replace theta with ix. So we get e to the i times ix plus e to the minus i times ix all over 2. Um, because i times i is minus 1, that's going to simplify to give me e to the minus x. And then this one i times i is minus 1 times y minus equals just this one here. So I get e to the x. So cos i x is equal to this thing. You might notice that this is this is a real, this is all real. There's no imaginary part anymore. So it's quite straightforward to, to integrate. So now I'm just saying, well, if I'm integrating cos i x, I'm actually integrating this real function here. I can take out the, the 1 over 2 as a outside uh, integral. So I've got 1 over 2 integral of e to the minus x plus e to the x. And yeah, e to the minus x integrates to minus e to the minus x. e to the x integrates to e to the x. So I get this thing here. I'm, I'm, again, not worrying too much about plus c at this point. So there we go. So I've now integrated this function. The, the only question is, is this integral here, the, the thing that I've integrated, the same as what I predicted? Is that, is that thing the same? And then is my rule still holding? Okay, so there we go. So I've, I've shown that the integral of uh, cos ix gives me this thing. So the question is, is it the same as this other thing here? So is my rule holding? So let's see if we can show if it is. So let's have a look. So minus i sine ix. We, can we rearrange that into a different format? We're going to use the same sort of idea. Uh, I can start with what sine theta is. Again, sine theta is e to the minus so e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta over 2i. As before, therefore, sine ix replace theta with ix. I'm going to get this expression here. As before, i times i is minus, and then i times i times minus. It's going to be the positive there. So I get sine ix equals e to the minus x minus e to the x all over 2i. The next step is to say, well, that was what sine ix is equal to. Actually, I wanted to look at what minus i sine ix is equal to, so times what I got on the previous one by i, so to minus i times by this thing. Obviously, I've got an i on the top, i on the bottom. They're going to cancel out, so I'm going to get uh, i sine ix is actually equal to a half, and then I've got a minus e to the minus x plus e to the x. So you can see that I have actually got the same thing that I'd got previously. So I've basically shown that the cos ix dx, yeah, it does indeed integrate to minus i sine ix plus c, or we can write it as 1 over i sine ix plus c. Okay, so the rule still holds, uh, even though we're dealing with complex numbers, I can still use my same ideas to, to do my integration. And just an aside on that, so there we go, I've got this result here, cos ix dx is equal to minus i sine ix plus c. 
if you know about hyperbolic functions, um, hyperbolic cos is defined as cos i theta, and hyperbolic sine is defined as minus i sine i theta. So therefore, we actually have this result here. So the integral of, well, cos i x is, is hyperbolic cos is equal to, or minus i sine i x is equal to hyperbolic sine. So therefore, we have this integral, that, that integral of hyperbolic cos does give us hyperbolic sine.